Okay, hopefully I got the camera right this time. <laughs> because otherwise I'll be spending a lot of time filming this for no reason. Anyway, yeah. This is not a sewing video, it's just a vlog. I uh, figured I would do something other than just sit and stare at the camera while I'm vlogging. So you get to watch me iron some face masks before sewing them. to put some distilled water into my iron. So anyway, I've been wanting to... So the inspiration for today's vlog was St. Joseph the Worker. It's his feast today. By the time you see this, it'll be yesterday or the day before or way back, but that's okay. Um, so anyway, working from home. A lot of people are working from home now by choice or by necessity. I started working from home over 17 years ago, but full time 17 years ago. And And that was after raising three kids, working three jobs for nearly 20 years. When I had my youngest son, I decided I am not going to go and work outside the home anymore for somebody else. So here I am. A lot of people are finding a situation new, however, right now. So I, I just wanted to give some support and encouragement for those of you who are this is supposed to fit a two to four year old and I'm looking at it going, I don't know, but since I can't go over there and measure it on him right now, I'm going to make a mock up. I'm going to make a couple of trial ones and drop them off with his birthday presents and um, see if they fit. If they fit, I'll make a few more, hopefully with some cuter fabric. And then, um, They will, uh, and if not, I'll just have to adjust the pattern. But this is the the size that the pattern said to cut for a two to four year old, and then this is this size is supposed to fit a nine year old. So I mean, by the time we get the pleats in and fold it up, it's getting kind of small. But we'll see. I'll just make a couple of each and they can try them on and send me a picture and I can adjust from there. And then I'm making some adult, more adult masks for my aunt and uncle, my cousins, and my older kids, and some for myself and my dad and my youngest. So right now I'm just going to do two of each of the children's ones. But anyway, working at home. Working at home can be really challenging, but let me say that I wouldn't do it any other way because working as, at home has enabled me to homeschool my youngest son um, and spend a lot of time with him. That has been wonderful. It has enabled me to travel full time in my RV and then just take my work with me. And it is currently enabling me to care for my dad who has dementia. So I am a big believer in working at home, in entrepreneurship, and you know, but not like most people. So take it with a grain of salt. But if it works for you, then that's great. So I remember when I was working for other people and commuting anywhere from an hour to three hours each way that I would be like, wow, if I could take this two to four hours a day and if I was working at home and I didn't have this commute, oh my goodness, all the things I could get done, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen, okay, because you come home 
it's full of distractions. You've got your kids, you've got the dishes in the sink, you've got what am I going to make for dinner, you've got, oh my gosh, that looks gross, i got to clean it, and you've got all those things, you know, your, your carpet needs to be vacuumed five times as much because you're walking across it all day long and it's not staying clean because you're home. So there are distractions. Um, And, and that's been the same for me for 17 years. Um, you just keep dealing with it, keep adapting, keep adjusting. So you get your family to adapt, you go with the flow, you prioritize what needs to be done. Okay, I need to do this to get paid. So right now, you guys got to go do something else so that I can get done. When I get done with this, then I'm all yours. Um, so, there's that. And, and temper your expectations, because like I said, you know, when I was on my commute thinking, oh, I'm going to get all this stuff done, <laughs> and do all these projects, and life's going to be so perfect. Um, it, it doesn't work out that way, and it's okay. Um, you just... Just, I don't want to say lower your expectations because, you know, you shouldn't lower your expectations. It, it can be really wonderful in spite of the challenges. Just temper them. Don't get all frustrated because things aren't going the way you planned because things don't go the way you plan at your job either, do they? And things don't go the way you plan on your day off either. They're not going to go the way you plan when you decide to work at home or from home you know, for people that are running a business where you go out someday we'll go out again so anyway I, working at home is just one of the ideas that I address in my book my book series Get Out of the City and Thrive in Paying for the Dream book 3 uh, so mention a little bit more of that at the end of the blog. Right now you've got people working remotely. If your job has you working remotely, play with that idea a little bit. See if maybe you can do that more often once everybody's returning to work. That's going to save your company on overhead and you know you've already started down that path doing that if that's what your company has you doing. So maybe you can throw out some ideas and talk to your boss about doing that more often. Um, teachers working from home. My daughter-in-law is a teacher and she's, you know, I asked her how it was going and, and it's difficult. Teachers are on Zoom trying to deal, now I, I don't know, I haven't been there watching or, or I haven't watched any friends that are teachers dealing with this, but from what I can gather they're on Zoom and they're trying to teach a class like they do in a sticks and bricks school and you know, remote learning isn't sticks and bricks and it shouldn't be. So I can just, it, it can be great, but it needs to evolve to where it works and you know our whole educational system needs adjustment so it's hard but you know anyway that's a whole nother subject that I wrote a blog post on you can go to my robindolanauthor.com and check that out California schools reopening but um, she's a teacher and she has my grandson there who's nine and she has my grandson there who is four and so the four-year-old doesn't really have too much schoolwork just what she wants to give him but the nine-year-old does and he's got a lot of schoolwork and probably more than is realistic, probably more than they do in class when they're in school. 
So it's it's kind of erg. It, it's hard on the parents and on the teachers, um, and it shouldn't be, but it is, and I get that. Um, doing all this stuff at once, it's a challenge, it's hard, it's frustrating. Let's breathe and evolve and, you know, give feedback on it. Give feedback because it can turn into a good thing. It can free up monies in, for schools in one area that they're not needed anymore because of the remote learning and use that to hire more teachers to handle, handle smaller numbers of students and give them more attention for learning. So anyway, yeah, it's hard. It's hard trying to schedule yourself, trying to get your work done, trying to take care of your students, your clients, and your kids all at the same time. Um, but don't give up. Don't let it get to you. It's because it's going to be okay. You just, it's just learning a new skill set and learning what works for you and checking out what works for other people. That's a big one. See what other people do that works for them. Isn't this pretty? This is our cruddy home ones for, you know walking around the block and stuff. Anyway, yes, that's that's paint and an old skirt with some embroidery. So anyway, learning what works for you and doing it in a way that works for you. It's, it can be so rewarding to work to work from home, to work at home, to spend more time with your family, or to have less, to have less frustration, less commute, less expense, um, and more of a quality of life. So if, if this working, if this experience of working at home is something that you want to make work for you, and, you know, I, I'm not going to judge you if you're just dying to get back to work and get on that freeway and, and you know, get out of the house. I don't blame you. I, I'm used to working at home and being at home. And, but we used to go for outings two, three times a week, you know, and now we go around the block once a day. So I'm missing it. Um, and, and I'm missing the beach. But I'm not going to go to the beach and spread my germs and pick up somebody else's germs right now until there are treatments and vaccines and whatever there needs to be and precautions what, and, and common sense. There will never be common sense. I don't know who I'm fooling, but treatments and vaccines, we need that. So I'm going to stay home. I'm with you. I hear you. Give it time. Roll with it. Find, find your groove for working at home. Do what works for you. Do what you need to do to get your pay. And if you are unemployed, if you've been laid off because of all of this, then let me encourage you to Try, you know, try starting up your own business or whatever you've dreamed of doing that your job has gotten in the way of, the need to pay the bills has gotten in the way of. If you're, if you're getting unemployment, if you're getting the stimulus money, great. If you're not, that's hard. Um, try and reach out to food banks to places that are out there to help people that are in your situation. Um, but either way, if you have some money, if you don't have any money, 
you can find work that you can do. You can find a service that you can provide. There is a service that you can provide. There is work that you can do from home. Wow, I don't know. I think I think I messed up the pleats on that one. There's work that you can do from home. I have a lot of ideas in my book which are not springing to mind right now, but <laughs> there's things like if you have internet, um, you can investigate online. There's places where you can teach online. I mean, not the public schools, you know, um, whatever skills you have, you can teach online. You, if you are a crafter, if there's something you like to make and sell, you can do that online. You can do it offline too. Right now we can't do much of it offline, but in the future, you know, when we get this handled, we can. And... Hi. You're talking to me. I'm talking to the camera. I'm trying to do a vlog. I'm, I'm not sure I'm doing very well. I'm unscripted and I'm like blah, 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 blah. But my scripted ones aren't much better so it can't be, can't be too much worse. Anyway, you can make a product, you can provide a service. See? You can make face masks. The camera's over here. No, face masks. I don't know where Kitty is. I, I think Kitty's outside. I think he's no, escaped again. Oh, it's right here. I don't even know if I cut my head off or not. I've adjusted this camera 9,000 times. I don't even know if I got it completely right. But I had it right. So I put it back up there and hopefully it's still right. Yeah, looks left to me. <laughs> so here I'm at a loss for words, so let's have a commercial break. Today's blog is brought to you by Get Out of the City and Thrive. This series of books is a guide for deciding whether moving to the country is for you or if you just need a minor lifestyle change. The books serve as a checklist for what to consider when moving out of the city into a slower, happier life. Resources as at the back of each book include websites, books, and YouTube channels for more ideas and professional help. Get Out of the City and Thrive is in three parts. Book one, How I Did It and How You Can Too, shows you how to get started. Book two, Milking the Wild Goat, How to Set Up Your Homestead, shows how to find land, set up your homestead, and raise animals. Book three, Paying for the Dream, How to Thrive on Your Homestead, gives you ideas for how to pay for it all. Available in print and ebook, on Amazon, and at your favorite retailer. So, if you do know people who do not have internet, please, and who do not have jobs or are having a hard time financially, there are places that are hiring. Um, you know, if you see an ad for Amazon hiring in your area, because people are shopping online, tell your friends who don't have internet about it and where they can find more information and apply. Um, delivery drivers are in demand now. Personal shoppers, Instacart. I couldn't get 
and Instacart delivery for two months. Now I can finally get Instacart deliveries again. I don't know if they hired more shoppers and drivers or what, but I'm just glad I can get deliveries again. That's one less person in the stores and one more person with a job or at least an independent contractor which I really believe in. I've been an independent contractor. I've been happiest being an independent contractor my entire adult life. Um, Self-employed. It's That's just my bag. I love it. So, anyway. And these jobs, they don't have to be permanent. They can be just for now. When the demand goes down, you know, demand goes down. It, it probably will when things get back to so-called normal. And then, you know, hopefully other areas of employment open back up again. So, there's that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Come visit me at robindolanauthor.com.